Hello, and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jest to you one page at a time, one day at a time. Put it up on YouTube, and we all enjoy it, don't we? That's right, we do. But, uh, well, yeah. let's just knock this one out. No bullshit today. This is page 341. Here we go. <clears throat> Resembles some sort of animal that's been run over in the road. Trolst, who's looking for the first time at the idling sedan by West House's uh, dumpster, dumpsters, <laughs> and asking if anybody knew anybody who drove a new Nunhagen Aspirin advertising Ford, is the only upper-class spectator who doesn't seem utterly silently engrossed. Anne Kittenplan has dropped her racket and is charging McKenna. She takes two contact bursts in the breast area before she gets to him and lays McKenna out with an impressive less left cross. Lamont Chu tackles Todd Postlethwaite from behind. Struck looks to have wet his pants in his sleep. J.J. Penn slips on a grounded warhead near Fiji and goes spectacularly down. The snowfall makes everything gauzy and terribly clear at the same time, eliminating all visual background so the map's action seems stark and surreal. Nobody's using tennis balls now anymore. Josh Gopnik punches Lamont Chu in the stomach, and Lamont Chu yells that he's been punched in the stomach. Ann Kittenplan has Kieran McKenna in a headlock, and is punching him repeatedly on the top of the skull. Otis P. Lord lets down the beach umbrella and starts pushing his crazy-wheeled food cart at a diskette rattling clip towards 12's open south gate, still flicking furiously at the red, propeller, red beanie's propeller. Struck's hair is steadily accreting nutskins. Pemulus is undercover but still standing, his legs well apart and his arms folded. The figure in the green ford still hasn't moved once. Troll says, for his own part, he wouldn't be just sitting there and lying there if any of the little buddies under his personal charge were out there getting potentially injured, and Hal reflects that he does feel a sort of intense anxiety, but can't sort through anything can't sort through the almost infinite-seeming implications of what Trolsch is saying fast enough to determine whether the anxiety is over something about what he's seeing or something in the connection between what Trolsch is saying and the degree to which he's b absorbed in what's going on out inside the fence, which is a degenerative chaos so complex in its disorder that it's hard to tell whether it seems choreographed or simply chaotically disordered. Lamont Chu is throwing up into the Indian Ocean. Todd Postlethwaite has his hands to his face and is shrieking something about his doze. It is now, beyond any argument or equivocation, snowing. The sky is off-white. Lord and his cart are now literally making tracks for the edge of the map. Evan Ingersoll hasn't moved in several minutes. Penn lies in a whitening service box with one leg bent beneath him at an impossible angle. Someone way off behind them has been blowing an athletic whistle. Ann Kittenplan begins to chase Red Shy's general secretary south across the Asian subcontinent at top speed. Pemulus is telling Hal he hates to say that he told him so. Hal can see Axford leaning way forward, sheltering something tiny from the wind as he flicks it with a spent lighter. It occurs to him that this is the third anniversary of Axe Handle losing a right finger and half his right thumb. Fierce little Jay Gopnik is flailing at the air and telling whoever wants it to come on, come on. Otis P. Lord and his cart still sail clattering. All right, and that was page number 341 of this book that I'm reading. One page at a time, one day at a time. Infinite Jest. Um, yeah, so one more page tomorrow of the... Uh, the chaos surrounding this game of Eschaton. And then I'm done with this chapter. It's been a, been a couple of weeks, hasn't it? So. Alrighty. Uh, I love you all. And my shoes hurt. And I hope you have a great evening. And I hope I do too. Good night.